just wanted to just go over the Daniel prophecy leading up to the Roman Empire. Um, this is really clearly, you know, attested in in the book of Daniel um, that that people that um, have um, associated these empires with the prophecy of Daniel, the four empires that would rise up after Nebuchadnezzar um, and his son um, Belazar, and then Darius would rise up after that. Um, Medo-Persia. Um, so Babylon was in power 605 to 539 and then Darius Medo-Persian Emperor 539 to 331 BC um, up until the point where um, Alexander the Great rose up in 331, uh, 331 BC and you know, conquered the whole area. Um, this is all prophesied in the book of Daniel. Un undeniably, uh, he then has the beast has four wings, which are the four emperors of Alexander the Great um, that took over the empire and divided it up into four four directions. And then um, Rome, the legs of iron, um, that would conquer the conquer the world through a empire that um, totally crushed its victims was was no doubt the Roman Empire. Um, up to the point in Daniel 7 where you see the Ancient of Days on the throne you see the Son of Man come to the throne and interact with the Ancient of Days so there's, that's the book of Revelation is being described in, in the Daniel prophecy so that's the you know that takes us to the Ascension um, 33 AD up to possibly the events that are being described in the book of Revelation um, after that point. So that would be, take us up to pagan Rome 168 to 476 AD, um, the divided Roman Empire being iron and clay, which would be the Christian-based you know, empire where you have a population of um, you know Christian believers but they're it's still acting as an empire on the outside so that would be the clay you know the clay on the inside and the iron you know acting as the empire on the outside um, which went on you know until 1798 um, here's the Roman Empire in 117 AD at its, its greatest extent so the fullness of that empire at its greatest extent you know all the way from Britain to Egypt, to Armenia, to Spain, you know, so this whole section of land was all prophesied by Daniel that this, you know, this empire would, you know, expand out as iron, you know, this total iron grip of this empire and the strength of this empire. But that, you know, ultimately, of course, God's people would endure, God's word would endure through the ages, and God's word wouldn't be able to be stopped, you know, as we'll see. And then see in, see in about 150 A.D. So right after the book of Revelation is written about 92 A.D. You know, the Bar Kokhba revolt happens in 132 A.D. Um, so at this, the Christians are expanding throughout the, at this time. You know, during this time period, this is the first century of Christianity. Um, these Gothic tribes begin to move at some point around 100, 150 A.D. So around the time of... the the Bar Kokhba revolt happening down here, we have the Vogothic tribes ha r r rising up up here. So it's interestingly at the almost at the same time as the Jews are revolting in in Jerusalem, 132, you know, to around 148. You know, we have these Gothic tribes also coming in prophetically. You know, in my eyes, this is very this is all prophetic you know, that God would bring His justice ultimately to the Roman Empire. Um, you know, as these this empire is not Christian yet, it's still being run by the iron. The Gothic tribes would then completely come in and, you know, sack the Roman Empire. And this very you know slice of time in history that's not really well talked about, or documented, but Rome was completely sacked all the way to, um, you know, Athens to Constantinople to to Greece. Um, through Spain 
even in North Africa, Carthage, and all around this region. Um, leaving behind just the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire. And that's where the, you know, where the Christian, the um, church would come to this point of debate around this same time. 325 AD was when they have the um, Council of Nicaea. And then 365 is when they, they codified this Bible. And in 381, that's when the empire set out to create a one absolute doctrine you know in the with the the um the empire having this one absolute doctrine in, uh, of the bible of the new testament and that would be the you know the trinity doctrine um being coming to the clay and then being used at, you know in the iron of the empire so they would go on to conquer the these um Gothic tribes and these these Gothic tribes all actually became Aryan Christians. Believe it or not, they would all go on to become Aryan Christian because of a Gothic um, uh, apostle or preacher that went to went to these tribes somewhere up in here and preached to them, and they all became Christian. They all got you know they all became Christian and as they spread out, and at some point this all became a Christian movement of Aryan Christians just not not the not the uh, Eastern Roman um, Empire of the, you know this Trinitarian belief system but um, Aryan Christianity flourished through, for this time period and here's the actual remain of the Aryan kingdoms under the Gothic tribes and this would be the green is the of course the the the, the the iron and clay the you know the empire that would spread back out as a um, iron empire with the clay as the the uh, Christian population inside of, of this empire as you can see here so these would be the Kodashim of Dan the prophet Daniel mentioned in the prophet Daniel so you have all these empires being mentioned and it talks about how these Kodashim would rise up and you know and resist and and they would you know come back to 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 take the lands uh god would give the lands back into the hands of these of the kodashim and this is what happened in in this time period when they when these tribes somehow miraculously were able to take over the land of of rome um you know this is a, it's almost miraculous that these the the, the Barcop Bar revolt happened and then these tribes took over, um, you know, decades later. And here is later, you can, as the remnant of these Waldensian groups, you know, even throughout Rome and Italy and, and Alps that were, you know, resistant, those who were resistant to the, the uh, expansion of that, the Roman Empire. Um, the Byzantine Empire con reconquering their lands and you had many people who were still resistant to that for for centuries and didn't really totally disappear these people rose up um, as a groups of Christians that were um, thought that the Empire had forced its way onto the population and forced this Christianity on people through an Empire basis and they want they, they resisted that all throughout these areas uh, the, this Waldensian movement really took on a, like almost like a pro, uh, early Protestant reforma reformation of um, resisting the grip of the iron of the empire while wanting to keep the you know the spirit and the and the and the, the, the soft clay you know to keep the people so humble before, with God's spirit um, at the, you know at the same time and so that became the and that was the early basis of the Reformation happening so I, you know, I believe this is all prophecy this is all prophetic of God's glory ultimately coming into the to the to fill the whole world um, as these empires all you know dissolve you know we're, we're left with nothing but God's glory and God's kingdom in the end that's the stone that you know is cut out without hands it says in Daniel he talks about a stone cut out without hands in other words it's not it's not being built by 
man conquering, you know, this is this faith, this religion, the glory of God is not going to come by people conquering the world and forcing people to believe one doctrine um, like the, uh, like, you know, the empires have done. So it's the, the coming of the glory is going to be through, through realization, through, um, it's going to come at the end. It's going to come by total realization by people all realizing, you know, this is the truth. This is the way it is. People coming to a resolution um, that there's nothing else. There's only, all that's left is God's glory. After the will of man, people have tried to conquer the world by force and force other people to think the way they have, but through the spirit, through reason, through love, through truth, the glory should come. And it's not, it's by, it's by a stone cut out without human hands. And that's what's going to heal the world. It's when people stop, they just simply step back stop trying to control and carve out the world to make it the way they want it to be let dust it off let god's glory shine and come into this world and that's his his ultimate kingdom and this is here this is in daniel chapter 2 you know the the iron the clay the bronze the silver the gold were shattered and became like chaff on the threshing floor in summer like wind carry, the, the wind carried them away, and you can think of the wind as the spirit as well, the spirit of God. Carry is going to carry away all of those empires, all that stuff that people trying to take over the world by control the world, control what other people think through tyranny. That's all coming to an end, um, all like dust in before the spirit of God. Um, the wind carried them away, and not a trace was of them was found. The statue, but the stone that had struck the statue, the the, the glory, the gold of those, this white stone became a great mountain, Zion, the mountain of Zion, mentioned in the book of Revelations and throughout the prophecies, filled the whole earth. So the glory of God is going to fill the whole earth um, in the end. And that the, the will and control and tyranny of man is not going to stand. It's going to, it's like dust before the Spirit of God. It's all going to be just wiped away, gone before God's spirit that all the all those efforts will will come to an end will be folded up 